PHP object injection through the serialize and unserialize PHP functions can be super dangerous, especially if there's complete user control over what data is being serialized. Keep watching to see how we can take advantage of this to get remote code execution on a vulnerable web app right now. What's up, everybody? My name is John Hammond. We're looking at Natus level 26. So we're prompted with this draw a line functionality, and it looks like it will let us just enter coordinates for maybe a line that we want to draw. And it uh, looks like the application, once we submit this, will go ahead and create an image that is displayed for us with that line or whatever created. Um, so let's take a look at the source code. Let's see what's wrong with it. Let's see what we can do, because this is another really cool vulnerability in PHP objects. So let's take a look at the source code. Uh, HTTP, uh, HTML stuff here. Not HTTP, sorry, just HTML. Whatever, wrong acronym. Bunch of H words, or series of words in an acronym. So the PHP code here is... Uh, using a little bit of object-oriented programming, you can see we have a class here called class logger, and this has some variables set up, uh, private, that it uses only inside that class or inside that object, and they're denoted by the this keyword. Um, PHP uses the arrow notation to uh, denote the use of its own private variables inside of an object or inside of a class. So it creates a file, looks like it, that it's going to use to log based on off of uh, temporary directory and temporary file that we create here, and it keeps track of the session, supposedly. It has a function log that will display stuff there, and destruct will, okay, save it to the file and write it all out. That's fine. So construct is a constructor, destruct is uh, the destructor, constructor happens first when the object is first created, destructor happens uh, once the object is destroyed, or once it's done, once it's not in use anymore. Um, these underscore underscore functions are PHP magic object functions, so they are like necessary and built in for PHP. Um, keep that in mind because that's crucial to this attack that we're going to be looking at with our object serialization and deserialization. Um, there are codes to show an image. It looks like it just includes that HTML image element. Draw image. It looks like PHP functions to use a color and create a new PNG image etc, etc, and draw from user data it looks like another custom function here. It takes advantage of these x coordinates and y coordinates that we pass along. It looks like it's passing them through, that, through the get uh, method, and it goes ahead and draws a line, just like that. And it looks like it actually does this with a drawing cookie. We can see it's testing if this cookie uh, drawing exists in the, in the cookie array, and um, then it unserializes this data. It's base64 encoded to begin with, so that's why they have to decode it here. Um, and that's important to note, because unserializing data that we have complete control over is a huge vulnerability, because that can lead to some unsafe stuff happening. That can lead to some PHP remote code execution, and we'll take advantage of it uh, in a really, really cool way as we get into it. But other than that, it just creates this image in line. Store data, again, taking advantage of these x1, y1 coordinates, storing them as an object, and creating that as a drawing cookie that we have in base64. So you can see this store data function does that with an empty bit or a little bit of nothing to begin with, or creates an empty array, um, but it will create a serialized form of that object in base64 encoded. The page itself will create a session and it looks like it's using our session ID as the actual location that it's loading uh, the image file from. So let's play around with the code. Let's see how we can take advantage of this and let's see how we can manipulate it. Let's get over to our script. Hit control B to run it. Uh, set the syntax to PHP here. Cool. So let's see how this looks if we uh, pass along some of those arguments here. Let's create another request. We're going to change the URL to include x1 can equal 0 and y1 can equal 0. x2 can equal like 500, just like we've used before, and y2 can equal 500. Now let's go ahead and print that. See how this looks. You can see it's using our image source here. 
that's using from that PHP function, and it's using that session ID, supposedly. Let's actually go ahead and take a look at that. Session cookies, PHP session ID. And okay, you can see that Q1C9A is the same thing that it's using right there. But take note that we can control this. We can actually inject something into this. Like that session ID is just a cookie. So let's change it to something like uh, try some local file inclusion. Let's go up the parent directory a ton. Let's see if we can read out etc. password. I don't know what this even would do because it can't create a PNG from that, but we get a bunch of warnings and PHP errors. Session start, session ID is too long, contains little characters. Looks like the only valid characters are alphanumeric and hyphens and commas. So obviously it can't create that stream uh, and it's not a PNG, so it can't use this image PNG function. So that doesn't really work out very well for us, but we can get into something else with that object this logger class, because that looks like something that's being considered serialized and actually uh, like loaded into PHP, and we have complete control over it, we can take advantage of that, because it's just a cookie, right? We can see our original get request here. Let's see the cookies that we have before we supposedly submit the form. The request cookie jar has a session ID after that, but if we take a look at the session cookies following our request, let's try and run this. Request cookie jar, there's the cookie for PHP session ID, when we have another one drawing that looks like base64 encoded data. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that really is. Let's get drawing out of here. And let's go ahead and import base64 so we can decode it and take a look at what that code is. A64, B64 decode. Run this. Incorrect padding. Um, let's see what that actually looks like. Maybe it's not including the equal sign at the very end, or it's URL encoding them. It is. So let's decode that with URL lib. URL lib dot quote. And maybe unquote, I believe. I do that constantly. It is unquote. Okay, now we have our equal sign, perfect. Let's base64 decode that. Sweet, so we have strings and objects and things all created, supposedly in an array, but this is PHP serialized data. So let's take advantage of it with our logger uh, method. If we can steal that code, this class logger, we can actually change what these variables are and what they do. And if we give that to uh, the cookie, that drawing cookie, and the PHP application will like unserialize that data for us, it'll load up this logger, it will try and write that message, and we may be able to take advantage of what we actually write to a file. And we can actually essentially get some code on the server and maybe run our own PHP code because we are writing to a file with this. So let's steal this logger class. I'm going to put this in another file. I'll call it 26 underscore tool.php and set the syntax to PHP by adding this PHP tags and stuff above it. So let's indent, get proper white space here. So let's create a new object for that. Let's say um, new logger can be just object, object can equal new logger. And then let's go ahead and echo out the base64 version. Actually, let's not, let's not encode it yet. Let's make sure we can see that serialized data. Let's just run serialize on our object. Cool. So in the shell over here, let's run our 26 tool. Might just run PHP 7.0 um, 26 tool. And I'm getting a couple PHP warnings in there, so let's actually just redirect uh, standard error to elsewhere. Okay, so we see we have a logger object, and it's creating keeping track of these files here. So let's go ahead and change some of these variables, because we can take advantage of them and have them do interesting things, like write to a different file and write new things, like PHP code. 
So let's do some PHP code injection like that. Let's put this in a relative path that we know we can access, something like image, right? Because it's trying to load out of that image directory. Yep, Dr image files are from image forward slash natus in the session ID. So let's put something at like image winner.php and we can have some PHP code that's being written in the initialization or exit message. Let's use that regular PHP syntax and let's run our system command, cat, etc. Natus web pass for the next level. Cool. That should get us some commands running in this image winner.php file. So now that that's been updated, let's take a look at what the output of the script is. Okay, logger, we got the object, putting it at that file and it looked like it's just running PHP code, perfect. Now let's go ahead and base64 encode this. Okay, a lot of stuff here, but we can copy this and we can set this to our drawing variable in our session cookies. Session.cookies equal, I'm sorry, drawing, right? because that's the cookie that we're working with, set that equal to that base64 string. Check out the response here, and let's go ahead and run this. In the build output, do I have an error anywhere? I do. Let's see what we got. Oh, um, I may not have included my semicolons here yet in, the PH, in that PHP code, so now we can go back and get actual proper base64 code here. Perfect, let's go ahead and change that. Now when we run this script, we have a new fatal error, cannot use object of type logger as an array. Okay, and that makes sense because it is trying to read that file as a array, right? In the code, it looks like it tries to read that out as an array, but we know that that means that our code successfully executed. We know that we got that object to unserialize. So now we should have a new file, supposedly at image winner.php. So if we get that and check out the response, we've got the next password. Heck yeah. So I actually had used this for a little bit of testing earlier. Um, so Natus26 password is up here, um, but that is the Natus27 password, 55TB, et cetera, et cetera. Looks like we got it a couple more times for whatever reason. But that means that, hey, we won. There was our attack. We did some PHP object uh, manipulation with deserializing objects and taking advantage of some of those cool PHP magic functions. So if you want to learn more about this attack, it is PHP object deserialization. Um, I want to make sure I can actually type this. PHP object deserialization. And you'll see a ton of write-ups on this. Um, you'll see a lot of OWASP articles, etc., etc. And they all have that same... Um, methodology where there is a class or a little bit of object-oriented programming set up and they're using a PHP magic method like underscore underscore construct or destruct or two string etc etc so totally check those out because you'll see them a lot in CTFs that is a common uh, attack if you see the unserialized function in PHP you should automatically know something is wrong especially if you can control the data that's inside because that is going to be your attack vector so super duper cool. Thank you guys for watching. I want to give a shout out to my supporters real quick. Thank you to all of these people. Spencer Clark, Gal Horowitz, Zoke Attila, Orglothian Ruler, Unruly, Destroyer of Worlds, Bastion of Terror, Jen Grob, Timothy County, and Jacob H, etc. Uh, if I butchered your name, I'm sorry. But hey, you are awesome. Thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you for being willing to go on this journey with me. Uh, $1 for Patreon a month will give you the shout out just like this at the end of every video. Uh, $5 or more will give you early access to things that I'm trying to push out on YouTube before they go live. Um, if in case I record anything in advance and YouTube is scheduling. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, if you did like this video, please do press that like button. Maybe leave me a comment. Let me know what you think, what else you'd like to see, what we could have done better, how you solved this, etc. If you're willing to subscribe and if you really want to support me, check me out on Patreon. Thanks again, guys. See you in a later video.